easier for them to walk up than for me to look at them in the crowd and tears. Um, you guys excited? Yeah. All right, let's go. Look, uh, I'm going to get right off to it. Um, first off, let's give a round of applause to head office, everyone who had a part in having this happen. This is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, I don't know where Jamie went, but Jamie Lamb Prickett, um, just thank you for your courage and not giving up because you have a room filled with people who are living their dream life because of you and future. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and lastly, um, to Frank and Mauro, just thank you. That's all I have for you today for now is just thank you. The theme today is distinction, right? And distinction is excellence that sets someone or something apart from others. So what are some of the things that we could implement to strive for excellence? I'm going to cover some of those things. And look, over the next three days, right, you're going to hear all different ways that you can set yourself apart um, and strive for excellence. All right, so let's cover some. Number one, I think you got to change your habits. Change your habits with the idea or the mindset of just one more day. At the beginning of the year, right, all of us created a list of goals and, and things that we wanted to accomplish, right? Make some noise if that was you. At the beginning, you had a whole whack of lists of names and stuff, or, or things that you wanted to accomplish. See, most of us try to tackle way too much all at one time, right? We have a whole list of things we're going to change, right? I'll give you an example. I want to get into shape. Right? I want to get into shape, and that's such a drastic change. So it's so hard to change all at one time, and because of that, we fail. Right? And so in business, you haven't recruited a single person yet. I'm going to recruit 20 people this month. It's too much to tackle all at one time. If we, if we fail, and when we fail, we get discouraged. And when we get discouraged, we have thoughts of, I ain't good enough. I can't do this, and I'm going to quit. Jamie recently ran a 42-kilometer uh, marathon. Jamie just didn't wake up one day and say, I'm going to go run 42 kilometers today. That's just what it was impossible, right? It's too much to tackle all at one time. So what Jamie did is he, he started to walk and run a little bit, and then he, he ran a kilometer, and then the next week he ran another kilometer, and then the next week he's running three kilometers, and so until he reached that 42 kilometer marathon, and then that's when he did the race. And so if we, if we, it takes about now two months, right? It takes about two months to change one habit. Two months to change one habit. That means if you changed uh, one habit every two months, you'll change six habits in a year. What would be possible in your business if you changed one habit over the next two months? And if you did that for the course of the year, what would happen? What becomes possible for your business? Man, if half the room, if half of this room made a decision to change one habit over the next two months, it's scary. It's scary how good we can be. I'm fixing to tell you, over the next two to three years, we will dominate the financial services industry. One habit, next two months, you do that for the course of the year, with the mindset of just one more day. Number two, you gotta be tough. Man, you have to dig deep. You gotta search inside of you and, and see how bad you really want this thing. Man, you have, to, you have to, it's like a decision, like there's no other option, like this is it. You got to, and look, and the reason why I say that is because there's going to be moments and experiences where, you know, this business will bring you down to your knees. Man, you got to thank God for those moments. See, those moments and experiences, they make you who you are. 
Man, some, it's, it's, the, it's the rebound that matters. It's what you do next that matters. Some of us are living on stuff that happened in the past. Man, you gotta let that go. You have to let it go and you have to grow. It didn't happen to you, it happened for you. That's right. See, God has already given you a blessing that you've been looking for. He's just waiting on you. He, God's waiting on you. Some of us are living like, I'm waiting on God. No. When adversity hits, it's a test. He's, look, he's looking for you. He's waiting on you so that he can give you that blessing that you've been looking for. Man, I, 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 was, driving, I was driving to the old office, Mauro, and man, it, you, ever, you ever go somewhere and, and you have these these memories that come back, and man, I was driving to that old office on Romina, and you know, a lot of good memories, right? Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of, but man, there was a lot of painful ones. A lot of painful ones. Man, I just imagine God in those moments, you know, give me a glimpse of the future. Give me a glimpse of having a family. And living on one of our dream homes. Whispering in my ear, don't quit. Don't I got a bigger plan for you. Number three, you got to know your purpose. Man, when you know your purpose, you can't quit. It, it don't matter how many no's or how many chargebacks or, you know, uh, how many people quit. And those things don't matter when you know your purpose. See, guys, are your, are your goals for sale? Uh, how about your dreams? Are your dreams for sale? We'll see. Hey, look, you give someone enough money, you'll see how fast they put their goals and dreams to the side. Hey, look, you give someone enough adversity, you see how fast they give up on their goals and dreams. But man, when you know your purpose, it doesn't matter what rejection, it doesn't matter what adversity, it don't matter who quits, nothing can stop you. You gotta know your purpose. Number four, who do you listen to? Hey, look, are you willing to listen to your leaders over people who may not know what they're talking about? Hey, look, because look, some people just don't understand business. They just don't understand greatness. They're not going to understand why you dress so sharp. They ain't going to understand why you work weekends or work nights or, or you work 60, 70 hours or you're going to be late to events. They aren't going to understand that. There's going to be haters. But man, there's going to be your leaders your leaders who believe in you, who are gonna push you forward, who are gonna challenge you, who are gonna to listen to you as being great. Be careful who you listen to. You gotta choose those people wisely. Number five, you gotta get back up. Hey, how many, how many noticed that uh, uh, when Dinesh came out, like, that guy's jacked. Like, jacked, okay? Now look, out of a room of about 1,500 people, I bet, now, it's not going to be me, but I bet there's at least one person that can knock the nesh out. At least one. It's not me. At least one. Okay, but look, if the nesh stayed knocked out for a week, that's a problem. If the nesh stayed knocked out for a month, that's an even bigger problem. Some of y'all have been knocked down since the pandemic. You're still complaining about it. Hey, some of y'all been knocked down since the financial crisis, and you still, still can't get it back up. Some of y'all, something happened to you when you were a child. Hey, look, whatever happened, it wasn't fair. But what are you going to do about it? See, it's time to get up. It's time to charge. It's time to make a difference. Mao's been knocked down. He's been in business now for 25 years. 25? He's been knocked, knocked down so many times throughout his career, but last week he's been knocked down. See, guys, you don't know. You got to imagine how many lives would have been affected if in, a, in a negative way if Mao stayed there. You don't know who you're going to bless. By getting up one more time, you got to get up. Number six, you got to know that you're a vessel. Hey, look, a lot of the time we're self-improving self to self-improve. 
Look, we're not here. You're not here so that people can pour into you. See, a lot of us come into this business and we're like, uh, uh, Mauro, pour into me. Uh, uh, Frank, pour into me. Uh, Darren, pour into me. Man, you need to understand that God designed you to be a vessel. He, he designed you to be a pitcher of water, not a cup. Not only do you need to pour into yourself, but you need to pour into others. When you self, see that changes your perspective, doesn't it? When, when you self-improve, it's for you, right? It's for you, but more importantly, it's for your people. Because it's not if, it's when your people are gonna need you. Make sure you understand that you're a vessel. Man, you breathe life into people. Number seven, level of commitment. Hey, think all, listen, I'm gonna just say something straight. All the things, right, all the things that you're gonna learn over the next three days mean absolutely nothing, Rayon. Yeah, over the next three days, it means absolutely nothing without action. See, your level of commitment will match your level of success. See, th th you gotta have this be a priority in your life. How many of us say, like, this is my time, this is it, this is, I'm gonna change something, this is it, I'm gonna watch my smoke. And then you get distracted. Y'all watch all the series on Netflix, but you haven't booked an appointment yet. Or you haven't gotten your license yet. See, you have to eliminate everything and anybody that's gonna stop you or get in your way of being successful. Man, you gotta make a decision on how bad you really want this thing. You, you, gotta, you gotta be a, a demand for winning. You gotta commit to winning. You gotta have a mindset is if you're either gonna win or what? You're gonna die trying. See, consistency equals greatness. And consistency also equals momentum. I'm gonna close with this. Can everyone get up? All right, look, I want you to clap, but I want you to clap with one finger, okay? One finger, like this, yeah? See, this is you right now. This is you grinding. This is you, you really want this thing, right? This is you prospecting, you're recruiting directs, you're closing business, right? Making money, this is you. And if you do this long enough, what ends up happening is another person wants it just as bad as you do. And now you got two people working this thing. And two people prospecting, recruiting directs, right? Closing business, making money. And then what happens, the third person comes in. See, the room just got a little bit louder, right? The third, you got three people working this thing. Prospecting, recruiting, closing business, making money. And then what happens, the fourth person. And then the fourth person turns into a five person. There's nothing we can't do when we unite. When we unite, we will build the largest financial services company on this planet. I love you.